All right. Hey, everybody, Dr. Joe Buffield here. Great opportunity to share some more information with you. I missed doing this over the past few weeks here, but we're back. And we're back because we know what's killing us, and it is isolation. Genetics, life expectancy, and even illness. Isolation affects all of those. So let's dive into this because we know that at this time of year, there's a lot of isolation going on. It happens to be because, well, maybe you're sick, maybe you're depressed, maybe you don't have anybody to gather with. Dr. Stephen Cole, a uh, Department of Medicine head in UCLA School of Medicine, recently stated, Recent analysis have challenged this view by discovering broad alterations in the expression of human genes as a function of differing social and environmental conditions. I know that's a lot, but sometimes you know, when we talk about genes, how many here know about genes? You know, sometimes we have genes because of our, our hair, our skin color. Uh, can you roll your, your tongue? Uh, how about the widow's peak? You know, those genes. Well, we also have genes that uh, work behind the scenes without us even knowing about it, and they can change due to choices that we make in our environment or in how we express ourselves. Okay? So, research of social isol isolation gene expression is different depending on. If a person is lonely or socially secure, hmm, it's very interesting because many of these genes play roles in inflammatory immune responses. In the lonely per people population, 78 genes have worked together to increase inflammation. So let me say that again, but just a little bit broken down here. 78 genes that work together to increase inflammation were actually busier than usual, even when they were lonely and not even sick. Huh. So those genes were working harder and they weren't sick. So the, to help increase inflammation in the body, working harder. They weren't sick, though, but they were lonely. 78. So in the lonely population, 131 genes that usually cooperate to control inflammation were actually underactive. So when we're lonely, our body has to still do the work but yet they're not. It's weird, isn't it? And the underactive genes also included antiviral genes. So you mean, Dr. Joe, that if I am lonely and I'm not getting in community with others, my body could actually get sick? Yeah, you're right. It can actually get sick. We're meant to be together in community so that our genes can express themselves naturally. And when we isolate ourselves, I know it's, it's usually, you know, well, if I'm sick, I don't want others to get sick. Folks, that is a lie that you've been sold a bill of goods from the devil himself about that. Just because you're around someone sick doesn't mean that you are going to get sick. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that all sick people should always hang out together, but you have to use wisdom. That if your body is under stress, then it's going to work a lot harder, and that stress is going to create that situation where your body's going to express health, not sickness, health. So gene expression makes you who you are. Kind of like you are what you eat. But it varies depending on the life you live. Ah. So if we eat really bad, sugar all the time, carbs all the time, 
uh, refined foods, not enough vegetables and good fats and, and good protein, it changes our genetic makeup? Yes, it does. Um, maybe if we're sitting on the couch all the time and we're not getting up and moving um, and we're just tired, lethargic, and that's changing our genes too? Yes, it is. So you mean also if we don't get adjusted on a regular basis to affect our nervous system, that's going to change our gene expression? Yep. So then you're also saying, Dr. Joe, that if we are alone, if we are purposely isolating ourselves from other people and our community, that it changes our gene expression? Yes, I am. I am saying that. So stress is a good risk factor for disease. But social isolation is the best established, most robust social or psychological risk factor for disease out there. Nothing can compete. So stress is one thing, but when we isolate ourselves, it exponentially socially and psychologically creates that risk factor for more disease to occur in our A Journal of Human Genetics hosted a study and it stated only 10% of how long we live is determined by our genes. Only 10%. So whether you have good genes or bad genes, you have a 90% chance of actually living long. Right? Let's see what that really means. We find that genetic influences on lifespan are minimal prior to the age of 60, but increase thereafter. These findings provide a support for the search for genes affecting longevity in humans, especially at advanced ages. This was a Danish study. Those Danishes, they're pretty good. So benefits of living in community. People who live in community connected to others live longer, have positive genetic expressions. Gene expression makes you who you are. And Gene expression varies depending on the life you live. So that goes to the saying that I say a lot to patients that come in the office, that heart disease, cancer, diabetes, those aren't the number one killers. It is our choices. Poor choices are actually the number one killer to Keep us from living a long, healthy life. Gene expression varies depending on the life you live. I think it also is about the choices that you make. Because you have a chance to make different choices to change that gene expression. How cool is that? But it is awesome for us to live in community. This is you and I in this very moment. We are choosing not to be in isolation. We're choosing to get out there and be in community and connection. I love to connect with others. I hope in that connection we get to inspire. Inspire in a way that we get to experience abundance in our life. That's what I love to do as a doctor of chiropractic at Buffield Family Chiropractic. So folks, my call to action to you is, as it says in the scriptures, don't forsake the assembly of others. And there's a reason for that. Because when we do that, we set ourselves up for attacks from the enemy. Our mind starts to wander and think, and we start to feel depressed and we have doubts and then 
we're not getting out and exercising and then we start to choose the wrong foods and then we don't have anybody to talk to and then we're alone and you don't have to be alone. It's about the choices that you make. Finding those that you have connections with or those that you are in agreement with and maybe sometimes have a little bit different agreement with. But it's those that when you get together and you sharpen one another and you build one another up and encourage one another because isolation kills. I want you to choose to be in community and connection with others. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to bringing more inspiring messages to you. You guys have a great day, and thanks again. We'll see you soon.